Hello, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to find the area under a curve using integration. And so to do this you are going to need to know how to integrate and also how to calculate a definite integral. So if you don't know how to do that I'll link my videos on that below. So we'll start off with sort of a generic case. Okay, so say we have some generic curve f of x, so y equals f of x that might look something like this. And we want to find the area below that curve between the points x equals a and x equals b. So we want to find the area of that red shaded region. Well, to do that, all we need to do is calculate the definite integral of that function of x between the limits a and b, okay? And that will give us the area. So that is the formula there. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule and I'll cover those in this video. So now I'm gonna work through three different examples and I'll timestamp each one below and each one will get a little bit harder each time. So we'll start off with this first example where we wanna find the area of this shaded region. So that's the area below the curve y equals x squared between the points x equals zero and x equals three. And so that area is gonna be given to us by the integral, so the definite integral between zero and three of the function of x, x squared with respect to x. And so now all we have to do is calculate this definite integral. And that's gonna be given to us where we add one to the power and divide by the new power. So we're gonna get that that's equal to x cubed divided by three between the limits of zero and three like this. And then from here, all we have to do is substitute in the upper limit as our, uh, for x, and then subtract from that what happens when we substitute in the lower limit for x. And so if we do that, we're gonna get three cubed divided by three, subtract zero cubed divided by three. And if we work that out, we get three cubed is 27, and 27 divided by three is nine. And then zero cubed is zero, zero divided by three is zero. And so we get an area of nine units squared as our answer. So that was pretty easy. For the next example, okay, we're gonna find the area of this shaded region of the, underneath the curve y equals x cubed between the limits of negative two and positive two. But this example is slightly trickier, okay, because if we have part of the curve below the x-axis, like this part here, then its area is gonna be given to us as a negative number, okay? And so if we calculated this integral, okay, so the definite integral between negative two and two, of x cubed with respect to x. Well, as this curve is symmetrical about the y-axis, okay, and our limits are kind of symmetrical too, what that means is that these two areas are gonna be the same. And because the area on the left-hand side is gonna come out as negative, when we calculate this integral here, it will just give us an answer of zero, okay, which obviously we don't want because we can't have a zero area because it's obviously not zero. So the way we're gonna to have to do this is split our integral up into two parts, okay? So let me get rid of this. We'll split it up into two bits, the left-hand side or the part of the curve that is below the x-axis and then the part of the curve that is above it. And then we add these two parts together. So I'm gonna calculate the integral between negative two and zero of x cubed with respect to x. And then once I've calculated that, I'll add on the integral between zero and two of x cubed with respect to x, okay? Now, remember what I said, if the part of the curve is below the x-axis, my answer is gonna pop out as zero. So currently, this integral here is gonna give me a negative answer. And so to correct that, I could just put a negative in front of my integral, and then that will flip it and turn it into a positive number. So let's calculate this above integral first. So we're gonna add one to the power, divide by the new power. So we'll have negative x to the power of four, divided by four, between the limits of negative two and zero. Okay, and so when we substitute in the upper limit, let me write it out like this, negative, when we substitute in the upper limit, we'll get zero to the power of four divided by four, which is gonna be zero. And then we subtract from that, what happens when we substitute in the lower limit? So negative two to the power of four, well, that's gonna give me positive 16. 16 divided by four is just four, so we've got this here, which is gonna simplify down to, well, negative, negative four is just positive four. Let's now calculate the integral on the bottom one. So we're gonna get the integral, which goes to x to the power of four divided by four between the limits of zero and two. Substituting in our upper limit first, we get two to the power of four, which is 16. 16 divided by four is just four. And then we subtract what happens when we substitute in zero, well, we get zero. And so we get an answer of four as well. And so when we add these two areas together, we get four plus four. And so the area below that curve is eight units squared. Nice and easy as well, I think. Let's look at this final example. We need to find the area of this shaded region. Now, this example is a bit trickier for two reasons. 
One, we haven't been given any values of x to integrate between, so we're going to have to find them. As well as that, we're not just finding the area below a curve, we're finding the area of a region that's bounded between a curve and a straight line. But it's still not too difficult to actually calculate this area. The way we're going to do it is split it up, okay? So we're going to split it up into two bits like this. And then we're going to calculate the area on the left-hand side, so this part here. And that is just the area below the curve y equals x squared between 0 and whatever the value of x is there. And then we're just going to add on to that the area on the right-hand side of that line, which is this part here. And that's just the area below the straight line y equals 6 minus x between wherever it intercepts the x-axis and whatever that value of x is there. So my first step is actually going to be to find out the values of x that are going to help me. So the first one, let's right, zoom out a bit, is 0 here. Next, I'm going to find where these two curves intersect, which is just going to happen when we set them equal to each other. So we will get x squared is equal to 6 minus x. Putting them all onto one side, we're going to get x squared uh, plus x minus 6 equals 0. And then we're going to factorize this, and that will factorize 2x plus 3, x minus 2. And so therefore, we get solutions of x or values of x as x equals negative 3 or x equals 2. And as we're on the right-hand side of the y-axis, they're obviously going to intersect at x equals positive 2. And finally, where the uh, straight line y equals 6 minus x intercepts the x-axis can be found by setting y equal to 0. And so we get 0 is equal to 6 minus x. Then adding x to both sides, we get x is equal to 6. Okay, so there we go. We now have all the values of x we need. So finding the area on the left-hand side of the uh, red line, so this area under this curve here first, we can do that by calculating the definite integral between 0 and 2 of x squared with respect to x. So we add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, like this, between 0 and 2. Substitute in the upper limit first, so we get 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, divided by 3, and then we subtract what happens when we substitute in the lower limit. Well, that's 0, so that's our answer for the area on the left-hand side. And for the area on the right-hand side, so for this part here, we could actually use half times base times height and calculate the area of that triangle. But I think, because this video is on integration, I will just calculate the integral between the limits of 2 and 6 of 6 minus x with respect to x. But you could calculate, uh, calculate the area of that triangle and you would get the same answer. So if we calculate this, we will get 6x minus x squared over 2 between the limits of 2 and 6. Substituting in the upper limit first, we will get 6 times 6, which is 36. Subtract, well, 6 squared, which is 36, divided by 2, so that's just 18. And then we're going to subtract from that what happens when we substitute in the lower limit. So 6 uh, times 2, which is 12. Subtract 2 squared, which is 4, divided by 2, so that's just going to give me 2 like this. And simplifying this, we'll get 36 subtract 18, well, that's just going to be 18, minus uh, 12 subtract 2, which is 10. So this area on the right-hand side is going to be 8. And so the total area of that shaded region is going to be 8 over 3 plus 8, which is going to be equal to, let me use a calculator just because it's going to make it easier, uh, 32 divided by 3 units squared. And there we go. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share. And go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. And I even have like a playlist on integration differentiation. So you can go over there and look at that. And thanks for watching.